Hello, welcome to HBXL Smart Success Stories. Today we're with UK ProBuild discussing Estimator Express. Hello, my name is Adrian Wilde. I'm the Managing Director of HBXL. Prior to setting up HBXL, I was a property developer for over 25 years and completed over 300 extensions and built over 80 new homes. Today we're going to be hearing from Charles O'Kell at UK ProBuild. Charles owns the suite of software and has been using it uh, for only a few months. So it'll be very interesting to hear how he's getting on. We recorded this interview uh, a few days ago as he has a very busy uh, job to run, as you can imagine, being a builder. And the interview was conducted with um, Adrian Wilde, myself, and uh, Joanna Mulgrew, uh, our product development director. So, we're going to hear mainly about Estimator Express, but I think uh, uh, Mr. O'Kell will be discussing some of his other experiences as we go along. Hello, everybody. Um, my name's uh, Adrian Wild. Uh, I'm the MD from HBXL. And today we've got uh, Charles O'Kell with us from UK ProBuild. Uh, Charles recently bought uh, some of our software. So, uh, hi, Charles. Uh, thanks for sp spending some time with us today. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and your company and, the, and the, the type of work you do? Hi, Adrian. Uh, good to speak to you. Um, thank you for asking me to get involved in this. I, I like to promote stuff that we understand and that's helping us. Our business is, is come about as a, as a collection of, of people who've been established as tradesmen, as, as kitchen fitters, plasterers, plumbers, um, project managers. My own background is, is, is as a developer. Um, and we've come together in, in a firm to take on originally projects for myself and then through colleagues and people I know a whole myriad of things. So from a chapel conversion to um, a bungalow new build and demolition to primarily student accommodation, total refit of properties, en suiting it like it's the, I was going to say Hilton, but these days it's the Ritz, isn't it? Because the Hilton's a travel lodge. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, this, that's primarily what our focus has been. Um, uh, <clears throat> so we, we'll have a go at anything, whether it being digging a drain, putting a fence up, or knocking a building down. We'll we'll do it. Okay, that sounds very diverse and complicated to manage and make money at. Correct. Yes, yeah, that's that's realistically where, where we've we've come in with the software is is understanding the business that we do. We're quite good at it without being egotistical, and we do enjoy it, but it's, it's very difficult. It's very challenging. Putting en suites into a Victorian building, it's not straightforward. You've always got problems you come up against, like chimney breasts in the way or um, needing to put support in that your client hasn't budgeted for or party wall agreements and so on. So we're good at it, but we've realized it doesn't really make any money. It makes wages. Um, so with these kind of skills, and the level of service we can provide, we've been looking more towards the, the retail domestic market, the single double story extensions, big kitchen fittings, that kind of thing, because our problem solving and experience on the bigger projects means that we will find these kind of things quite easy without yeah, degrading yeah. them, and we can do a better job. And, and this is where we, the, the software over the last few months has been guiding us this way, that we've looked at the bottom line and gone, we can make the same money on a, on a 20 grand extension that he can make on a 30 grand renovation refit yeah. and it's quicker and we can do more of them. So this is really where we've been looking. Right. So it's starting to change the way you think about your business, which is uh, an interesting. Um, Absolutely. It, it's, it's really changed how we think about doing business and whether we want to be busy. You know, the Gordon Ramsay phrase, are you a busy idiot? You know, are, are we making the, the most effective use of our skills and our team? Because it's not a big team. Um, there are only sort of six or seven of us. Um, do we re are we really using that team appropriately to make to make money? Because at the end of the day, that's what we're there for. Yes, it's yes. To it's, deliver it's, somebody it's, a building. It's We've got to make some cash. So what you've been what you've invested in with HBXL is our premium toolkit, isn't it? So that's the the estimating software, Estimator Express, Plans Express, yes, we, Health and Safety we, Expert, and the project the management lot. tools and contract expert. 
yeah, we we went for the whole package. I, I uh, um, initially found it through uh, Trade UK's website when we were buying our insurance, and yeah. went, oh, what's this? Um, having looked at the uh, looked at our pricing a little, mentioned it to my uh, co-director, who'd um, said, oh, is this the software that's that's been featured in um, Professional Builder magazine? I went, I don't know, I don't read the magazine. So I went and got one and had a look at it. Then I did a bit of Googling and had a, yeah. a look through the website and thought this is something that we really need to look at quite seriously. Um, and, and the package that was on offer through Trade UK had whetted my appetite. But when I started looking at everything else, I thought this this really sounds, if it does what it says, yeah. this sounds really good. So I then came in uh, to have a demonstration uh, with, I think, Matt and Ed. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I was looking at it thinking, well, they're making it look very, very easy, um, but I like what it does. And then yes. uh, we've got different skills within the teams. You know, I'm uh, more on the accounting and backside kicking side than <laughs> the uh, playing with... Uh, Someone has uh, absolutely got to be. In a... Yes. Yeah, they do. And we, our apprentice just keeps finding apps on his phone that he can sort of create a floor plan of a building by walking around putting his phone on different walls and yeah. he does it for him and he's really into that so I thought right we've got so we've got somebody who's, who's going to get to grips with this um, and obviously it provides him more uh, importance within the company cause and that yeah I think gets long term value you know he, he, he becomes um, a, he a very important there. resource absolutely it's something that we can use um, we're often saying to different members of the team will you upskill? Uh, and, and this is, uh, w- without turning into a quantity surveyor or anything, this, this handling the, the inputting or the initial data or, or finesse of that, it, it just, it, you've got five, six, seven people, use them. Yeah. Um, so while my side of it is to then present the quote and to uh, deal with the clients and create the contract to create the health and safety file, manage the project plan, the initial work, I could instantly see we've got a resource that can help with it, and then we can look to expand our training as we go. So I essentially came in and really felt the whole package, it, it would be best to get everything in mm-hmm. one go and get compliant with all of it then try and bolt things on as we went. Um, and that reflects in your package deals. It's, yeah. it's a case of saying, if, if you're going to go for it, we'll look after you because you've then got your, your uh, annual support fee, which is, I think, personally, quite reasonable. Um, and your investment is, it, while it is significant, it's not massively more significant to get the lot than to just get yeah. two or three bits that you think. So that's that's where we went, and we thought um, we'll, we'll dive in and do it. And when we eventually got a particular client to pay up uh, around yeah. Christmas, with, with Matt having looked after us for about six months, I think it was, um, yeah. We 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 take the plunge and gone from there. Well, that's not that's not unusual for it to take you know seven, you know a good few months to kind of evaluate and understand the software and make sure that you know that it's going to be right for your business and that you know you are going to make real use out of it. Um, yeah, and frankly, get somebody to pay you so you can afford it. I mean, <laughs> and that, unfortunately, that's not a new story for us either. It's uh, yeah, it's um, uh, there's a lot of. Um, and we're not not cowboy customers. I shouldn't go that far, but necessarily. But there are a lot of customers that take their time paying or uh, yep. find reasons not to. Um, or little snagging lists, which mean you technically don't complete. Yeah, absolutely. And for a long time. Yeah. And and that's one of the things that uh, I, I have said before that the idea of being a company uh, to to change your profile, to change what you do. It, I I do feel without without being disingenuous to clients and, and people in the market that if, if you turn up as a kitchen fitter, for some reason, people seem it's slightly more okay or easy to knock you on your price, to mm-hmm. delay paying you to try and get your price down. There's, there's this feeling that an individual tradesman shouldn't be earning above minimum wage, whereas yeah. if you are a company and, and you have presented a contract and you've presented a project plan, and you've presented a detailed quote, and yeah. you've gone the level of, of beyond with branded clothing, sign written vans, that kind of thing. Y- you are in a much more strong position at the end 
of a job to yeah. either say, we've priced it right, therefore we can absorb a few extras to keep our clients very happy because at the end of the day, personal recommendation is still number one in the industry. If yeah. you work on the street, the chances are you'll pick up some more work on the street if you're good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you've either got to have a little bit more money on the job to make sure you can provide that level of service or you've got to be in a position where in the extreme nature you can say, that's fine, if you don't want to pay, it goes straight to our solicitors because it says quite clearly in the contract you've got X period of time to pay and you're not doing so. So yeah. you've, you've got that extra backup as well. Although it's rarely needed, before when you are just a bunch of tradesmen, you're constantly chasing people for money. And if, if you're doing yeah. full day's work, it's harder. Yeah. They feel that customers feel they can get away with it, I guess, and that there's more of a balance of power. I, um, I would, I would say, having there is, you know, yeah, there is. And if somebody owes you a stage payment which is about eight thousand pounds, then they don't half get pernickety on, um, say, the edgings of their tiles or, or yeah. something. So you, you're thinking to yourself, if you owe money uh, to your trade suppliers or anything you, you really need that stage payment so you're forced into a corner it yeah. gets unpleasant if you've priced it right and that that final payment is is your profit from this yeah. job yeah. you can actually say to you i tell you what i'll change that that's no problem um you've you've got the money you can pay us so that's the only snag you've got right well tyler will be in the morning that will be changed and we'll get the payment and you kind of guilt them <laughs> yeah, yeah. To going right, I'm not going to do a discount. I'll change the job because we know the money's the money's on the job, and that's understanding that is is our number one for the HDXL software to actually have a handle that we do know that when we've gone into a job, we've priced it right. Uh, yeah, we're not we're not working for wages. We, we're a firm that has added value. Um, that has added knowledge and skill and to convey that both in the professionalism of, of the quotes and the project plan and, and the contract but the legality at the back of the contract showing you're not messing around yeah. and, and the knowing that you have a markup on the price. I, I genuinely say when we were going through the software the, the standard rates that within, within your price book yeah. of, of tradesmen and of markup, we were shocked because having been in the investor industry, you know, yeah. the, the property, you know, Homes Under the Hammer, uh, which is a great watch, but frankly, the dirt of the building industry, um, yeah. we're looking at the kind of prices we're having to charge to get the business to do things and thinking we must be out of our mind because yeah. the prices that your software is showing us, which we're then touching base with domestic clients, and this is exactly what they're expecting to pay, and you've got a little bit of wiggle room in it, we're thinking, well, we're, we're, we're nowhere near that. Um, yeah. We're not charging anywhere near that kind of money. We're, we're completely in the wrong industry. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're wasting a lot of time and effort when we could be using exactly the same skills and quality, doing things that is easier, and that somebody's going to be more... If, if it's your own kitchen, you really care. Yeah. If it's your kitchen for a student house, you want it cheap, 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 and you want it as robust as hell, and these two things are often mutually exclusive. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's a constant debate, and we find the time we spend with a client, of, of an inv a specific student investor, is enormous in comparison to a domestic client, somebody who knows what they want. They want a nice kitchen. They want a nice extension with the uh, roof lights in it. They want nice things, and they're prepared to pay for it because... They know how much it costs. Their architects told them, your quotes told them, that it's it's such a much easier job than somebody yeah. going, oh, but it would be nice to do this. And you say, yes, but it will cost you. I, I can't just change your shower room for free. Yeah. Um, so so ha have you moved into this home extension market now and you're starting to win work? It's the it's the market we're going into at the moment. We've had some very encouraging noises. Uh, yeah. We are unfortunately a little bit committed to existing student clients up yeah. between now and September. So at the moment we've done, we've, we've put in a couple of test quotes to see if we were in the ballpark, um, which, which we have been, but they've been, we would like you to start tomorrow 
and we've said, well, we're not available till the back end of August. Yeah. Um, right. So it's you're transitioning to... really now at this point in your business cycle. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. We we've, we did politely say to one of our clients, we've got a, a two properties to do for him in Bangor, which start on Monday to deliver for September. And we've said to him politely, we don't want to be doing this next year. Yeah, yeah. So it you're kind of walking that. away from some of those projects now because you're thinking, actually, I'm not, I'm just not making any money on those, Correct. really. It's, it, it's hard work, hard graft. And yes, and it's no a great real return. challenge, especially in Wales, um, <laughs> because all the building regs are different. And if your team happens to have Scouse accents, then um, the building regs get very, very difficult, um, yeah. we, we've discovered. Uh, so we, we're looking at saying that actually, the domestic clients that we that we've dealt with doing kitchens or um because obviously our our investor clients have hired us to do things for them at their own sales and you, you you're experiencing somebody who's a totally different animal in their own property yeah. <laughs> that what they will spend on tiling of their own bathroom versus what they will spend on tiling of their student property but yet will expect the same level of finish is utterly amazing. So having sort of had this epiphany and felt that we'd got a reputation that was getting us work within the investor market, but to break into the domestic market, we needed to look as good as we are. And we feel that the, the quote, when I actually bought a quote uh, through your estimating service uh, before we got the software, it was another one of the you know, Challenge HBXL opportunities. Ah, yes, we, yes. We've got a really complex uh, conversion project, and we threw it in. And I said, "Right, let's let's see what comes out." And that, uh, I think, it was a 28-page quote uh, came out, and I was just looking at it, thinking, "This is fantastic. This is what uh, for this particular job uh, a, a QS would be charging an absolute fortune for it." and uh, I had a little word with a um, stepdad who's a retired surveyor and said, right, this level of detail, this level of presentation, um, you know, with the logos and everything on it, but printed on nice paper as opposed to Tesco's value. Yeah. What would you have been looking at as your firm to charge for that? And he went, probably two grand. Yep, yep. And uh, uh, I said, well, there we go. This this is, if if we can be saying through our our architectural contacts and to domestic clients. You can have this for free. It costs us, say, £10 to um, print and present a very detailed, very professional-looking quote that we can send cold to people, yeah. if we like, in, a, in an area that we want to work. And we can get that conversation happening because you're already looking more professional than, than turning up. You, you can be as... One of our colleagues who I've kind of recommended looks into this software um, based in real. Craig is as good as we are, but is he, he is a builder. He yeah. turns up covered in plaster uh, and, and his van's sign written, but it's dirty. And I've kept saying to him, if you want extensions, what we're learning is go and get your van cleaned and turn up in clean scruffs. You know, have, a, have a set in the van and turn up with this. You know, don't sit there and work it out on a piece of paper. You may come to the same conclusion. Yeah. But this presentation is the angle. For us, yeah. it's the pricing. You know, we've been getting it wrong. We've not been charging enough. We've learned that. We're now walking away from a number of clients and contracts that we know we're not going to make money on. Um, so it's changing our business. But for some of the other guys that we know who, who work in sort of neighboring areas, we're saying to him, you really need to be doing this because it's the level of professionalism that, that you have that you're not presenting to your potential clients. And if, if I'm spending 40 grand on an extension, the, oddly, the guy who pulls up outside in the Mercedes with his iPad is far more likely to get the work, even though he's a complete muppet, yeah, than the yeah. guy who turns up in his filthy transit van. Yeah. So I guess it's that balance, isn't it, between, between the two, um, uh, you know, at, on, from a presentational perspective, if you're if if you know you know you look you look the part, but you're not too slick, that you've got your um, 
as, as in yeah. you're making more money than cents, <laughs> therefore you might be overcharging. Um, but you, you know, you, you look professional. You've got the quote. You've got um, you know, you've got the right approach. Um, you know, you, we, you we hope that. Right. Yeah, we hope our customers win a lot more work off the back of off, off the back of that. We help the we help that that the business who's transitioning into trying to make you know the focus on making money, not just as you were saying before, um, you know, just paying paying wages. Um, yes, so and we're I, solving other people's problems. We've we've been making other people money by doing yeah. a really good job, and that's not egotistical. The, the, um, there's a particular street in, in Newcastle under Lyme that we know the investors who have five of the nine houses on the street. Two of them were done by another firm. Complete nightmare, cost of fortune. We're constantly in there solving problems. The others have been done by us. We've never been back. Yeah. Never, yeah. Had, a st- never had a snagging list. And you're sitting there thinking, we're making other people money. Yeah. Because we're yeah. so cheap. Um, we want to be at a tipping point where next year we say it's the same price plus 20 grand because we don't need the work. Yeah, yeah. We've got domestic. I've got a couple of things to add to this uh, uh, story. Um, I mean, we did some research uh, several years ago of our customer base, and we asked them how many jobs were they winning, and how many before they had the software, and how how many were they winning now? And on average, they improved their success rate by 230 percent. The, the, the other subtext to this conversation was that they were saying that the first time they'd used the software, they'd They'd said the same sort of thing. Blimey, this is far too expensive. I'll never win any work. But yeah. they've then gone on to win even more work, um, which it's, it's almost counterintuitive, but it, it, it's an absolute fact. Um, another little story here. I can remember going to my bank manager once I'd been trading for um, a few years because I used to do um, extensions and new build before I set up the company. And... I said to my bank manager, he said to me, your, your business is doing really well. You know, your bank account's in very good uh, fettle. That's when you used to have a bank manager you could go and talk to. And um, he said, well, what are you marking up your jobs? And I said, well, I'm marking them up 25%, which to me seemed quite a lot of money. And he said, that's not enough. You need to mark it up by at least 35 And I thought, well, I'll never win any more work if I do that. But I'll give it a try. And to my surprise, the business just carried on growing and growing. So you don't need to be the cheapest in the street to win um, I think work. You, you need station and good quality. So while, while your software doesn't sit there flashing that at you as a this is lesson number one, trust us, you, you'll get the business. You're right in in what you're saying that we're finding. Uh, I mean, okay, you, you do have to be good. You do have to be able to deliver the business. Of course, but we are, we are finding that. If we're being quite brutal with the client, even an established client, and saying, I can't, not only I can't, I don't want to do it for that price. Uh, I, I even had a, a client yesterday talking to us about what we'd quoted for a decoration element of, of the job and what they expected. And I said, well, I'm, I'm absolutely fine for you to go and get a quote from somebody else to do what you want. Because we don't want to do it for that price. I said, yeah. I said, not only can I can't, um, I won't uh, do it for that price. We, we will lose money. It, it will be ridiculous. So I'm quite happy to drop that from the quote. You get somebody else in. Quote for what you actually want. I anticipate we've put 2,300 in. I think you're going to be looking near a five, if not more, for what you actually want. Um, and uh, and we can work with them. And if you like them, fine. Or if you want to come back to us and say, can you beat this quote we've now got, we can look at it. But I, I'm not going to bid against myself when yeah. I know... What we've put in for, what we've priced for, is is reasonable of what we're going to do. And you're having that backup of, of the software telling you, yeah, you can mark up like this. has given us the confidence to be blatant with some of our customers and say, no, you've had a good deal out of us for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you can either find somebody else or you can pay us properly. Yeah, um, that's a really useful insight, isn't it, into your own business? Because you know, a, a, a lot of builders and tradesmen they they really pride themselves on the knowledge of how they run their business and do a great job. And we say, you know, it's it, it, it's not about that. You know, um, pr- pricing work is is, is it, a that it, you know you, there's there's so many elements that you can make mistakes on or under under price over you know make mistakes on miss things out and the prices in the market changing as well at the moment you know are, are really significant in terms of keeping on top of you know the the, the latest rates from merchants I mean I think it was insulation you've got a spot on. 
yeah. it's gone massive. You know, even in March, I think it was up, ten, you know, ten percent alone in um, now for insulation products. So, yeah, we were so scared you... by getting it so wrong uh, for a while. We we'd priced things that that materials cost and and what because a lot of lads have gone out of the industry. The price of the lads who were left who were any good have gone up. Yeah, and yeah. We know we know kitchen fitters who who charge in excess of two hundred and fifty pounds a day. Yeah. And only expect to earn work two or three days a week because they then earn the same money as they would have done working yeah. six or seven days a week. Yeah. That it sounds really, all right, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, they're they're you know top of their game and they install for people like Kevin Nolan, so they do they're doing yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, but. Oh, and, and why not? Why shouldn't they be earning a good? Uh, wage they're if they're good at what they do they should do and and we've had to change our mindset of having to screw our subcontractors or, or our self-employed people down on their rate to be able to deliver the jobs we price for and we say no hang on why why are we not using our plumber at our price because we can't afford it on the job why the hell are we taking the job yeah you know if we if we can't do it, let them find somebody else we, yeah. we also sort of started saying to people, and we will not do an undertaking job. If you do go with somebody else and they make a complete balls out of it, we will not come and fix it. Yeah. Because we we will want 100% of our quote up front. Yeah. Because we will know you have spent your money. Um, so it's given us a lot more confidence in that side, but a lot more insight and knowledge and confidence in we know the prices are going through the roof. We know that. But the last two years what you could do for 30 grand you you can't do for 45 now really? um, mm -hmm. and and not having that knowledge at your fingertips is a real risk and, and we have made the mistake and if you do take on a job that you've got conscientious site staff and they're thinking oh we've taken the wallpaper off there we we shouldn't polyfill it we should skim that and they've skimmed it and they've done the right job but the price it wasn't on the job you're already losing hundreds. This adds up. Mm. Get to the end yeah. of the project, and you realise not only have you not made any money, you owe three or four grand to your trade uh, suppliers, and you're thinking, how did we do that? Yeah, it's easy, easy um, to do. Easy to do unless you've got the you know the right um, software tools and if the you've technology. Got right to, at the beginning, and, yeah. and we, myself and my co-director, on a, on a few occasions since Christmas, we've really looked at the business of how we want to change and go forward. We're, we're, not, we're not, not blowing smoke up your what's it, but it's looking at the software and going, we are getting this wrong. Um, we, we are working for other people, not for ourselves. We're not delivering what the company should be doing. Yeah. And we're getting our pricing wrong. We need to be saying to people bluntly, that's the price, no negotiation, that's it. If you don't like it, go with somebody else. Yeah. Or this is the price if you don't like it, we don't want the business. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think one of the things I felt when I was um, running my business, and, and I, I ran a similar sort of software, although it wasn't half as powerful as it is today, was that because I could turn around my quotes very quickly and they weren't taking me a week or whatever with all the incumbent cost, if somebody didn't want to pay for the, um, the job, then it, I, was, I could quite cheerfully say, thank you very much, I'll go on to the next job. Um, and get a sensible price for it. If, on the other hand, you have spent a week slogging away at it and it's cost you a fortune, you're far more inclined to say, oh, go on then, I'll give you a 10% discount, and then you've found that you've made absolutely zero um, from it at the end of the year. Um, the That's other thing, really, really um, I know at the moment you haven't purchased it, is as our accounting system that allows you to job, <coughs> job cost as you're going along. So rather than waiting for your year-end accounts, you can actually track the jobs as they're being constructed and, again, really um, get a handle on estimated versus real costs. So that, that, I think that's the next part that's of, your, really of the jigsaw you to in your journey, isn't it? Ironically, two weeks ago, I was actually sitting with our accountant getting the pre presentation um, from the accounting software, um, you know, the remote sit there oh, with projector um, yes. while we're doing it because we just done that historic look over you know the last year and everything and gone we've we've actually not had a very good year because we've taken on business we didn't make any money um, and we've taken on a project that we've underpriced or as I say in terms of North Wales we've taken on a project that we've done what we should have done 
in terms of British building regulations and the Welsh building regulations have decided it's different and made us dig up all our drains and relay them. So oh, that was a, a project that should have wiped its nose having gone wrong on a few occasions, wound up losing a few thousand pounds. Well, that's got to be paid for somewhere. So we looked at that and we're looking at it at the end of the year going, actually, we've, we've not really had a great year and then we got the presentation from the accounting software and I was talking to my accountant saying, I'm, I'm really keen on this because I've seen Sage and, and Quicken and QuickBooks and all, all that kind of thing and Pegasus. I've seen all this stuff um, and loads and loads of adverts for free things and invoicing things and they just don't do what I think we're going to need yeah. um, and going forward. And when he was giving us the presentation about on-job costing and, and so on, one of the things that really jumped out at me is we, we want to go back into the, the B&Q uh, uh, and Wix install market as well because we have a couple of colleague tradesmen specifically within tiling um, who would love to do that kind of work but cannot stand the payment period. Yeah. And we've looked at it as saying, well, there's, there's a markup to be had there and to keep other tradesmen busy doing what they do uh, – uh, but we wouldn't touch it now because we can't account for it. I can't say to myself, on Friday I've paid Dave X and four weeks later I am going to get Y. Yep. And, and it's we've keeping it track up. of it all, isn't it? Keeping track Correct. of it. It's, it is not an impossible. It's kept us out of that market for the last year yeah. is the idea of the nightmare of trying to keep on top of it. And, and the major companies kind of pushing their credit terms as long as possible so yeah. it has got to the point where your you Wix and B&Q <coughs> are struggling for trade installers for kitchens, bathrooms. I mean, B&Q have gone into boilers and central heating. It's it's not massive profit business for, for a, a company like us versus a full domestic, but it's tick over money, yeah. and it needs managing. So we have looked <coughs> at the software, and our accountants at Wallets were very impressed to the point where um, the the partner who was in the meeting with me left at the end of the meeting to make a phone call to two of his other clients to say, you want to have a look at this? Uh, <laughs> excellent, excellent. I, I'm really, really pleased to hear that. Well, hopefully that goes um, get, goes goes well as a as, um, as, as an investment as a, as for a you. referral and pass yeah. along. I mean, it's something yeah. we're looking to do. Uh, the spread cost of it um, is, is very appealing from a cash flow perspective. And as uh, I say, the, the, the knock-on from... Because it, it is a niche product. It, it doesn't have the marketing budget that your, your sage is going to have to the accounting firms. So those boys sitting there going, while I'd normally be saying to you, you don't need anything like this, you know, the big boys do everything. We're looking at this saying it's similar cost. It does a lot more of what you want to do. And you're telling us it talks to your estimating software. So you can do an estimate for a job. You can put it in here. On a Friday, you can assign your invoices and your, your, your hourage and everything to it and, and it does the multi-rate so if you've got a lad who is a, a plumber a, a, you know a gas safety installer on rate X if he's just working as a, a gadget for the day he's on rate Y because he's not actually messing with any plumbing or, or signing everything off it, being able to capture that kind of thing and then just do a report and say what's left on this job have we got Tottenham Saitney or have we got quite a lot, um, gives you an opportunity to make a decision whether you're going to do a little bit for your client to get that goodwill, to get that reputation, to say, no, well, we'll upgrade their tiles for them, or, you know, we've, we've, we've uncovered a problem, we'll fix it, and we'll absorb the cost because it's there, or do we need to be going straight on the phone saying to them, we're really sorry, you've asked us to knock this wall through, and, well, we've looked at it, and without an RSJ, we can't. Um, that's the kind of power that we want to be able to have in our knowledge and our understanding. <clears throat> it does take an investment. It does take yeah. a while to understand it. But moving yeah. into that different market, it should return tenfold. It really should. So when, when you um, l um, looked at um, your, kind of your, your software um, choices at the start and you, you were saying, right, okay, I, you know, I think I'll, you know, I might want the estimating, you also went for Plans Express. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, ha have you guys kind of really started to use that, or is that kind of like the next phase within what your, what, what, you know, your business planning and, 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 
and how that, that's adopted. Are you using it for visual estimation? It was what was coming over the desk. We, we were be give, being given such diverse things um, projects-wise. We, we weren't operating in one sole market. So we were getting, being given things. And I, I wanted to see, after, after having the presentation, there was a bit of me that wanted to say, which is going to be easier for us, scanning over the plans and getting it to import from there, or yep. asking for the CAD file and, it, and importing it, or just putting it into H, the Excel's Estimator Express and, and seeing what, what works for us. Then at the same time, we had a client um, who we've had to rent a, a garden um, from just opposite the site, and that owner of that garden would like to get planning permission for it and at the same time we were thinking well if we're not draw drawing the most complex house in the world it's only a, an outline planning permission application can't we do that as yeah. opposed to them spending 1500 pounds going to our recommended architect could we not provide a service saying well we'll we'll do an outline planning application just to take a punt yeah and see if it if it comes in now if if that goes well a we've learned a lot B, we've probably captured the work as well because we've, we've done the beginning bit. Uh, but see, it's another string to our boat. We do want the architects to provide us with plans, but the big one for me was, as you, you, as you know, we, we went for the whole lot, um, yeah. everything. And, and the big reason for that is that we find that architects don't pay any attention to electrics or plumbing. Yes, indeed. Um, so... They really don't. They they think a drain can can just magically disappear, and it just can't. So that's really where we wanted to get to. We're not there yet, but with some extra investment in training and thinking, we want to be able to look at a project, especially a complicated student conversion and something, work out where radiators should be going, where drainage should be going, what kind of meterage of pipe work we yeah. actually need what BTU rates we need throughout the building, therefore what size of boiler. That's what the the planning side really jumped out and appealed to me, as well yeah. as the basement element to it, um, is to say we need to have a much better handle on the install of the building than an architect gives us, because an architect just mm -hmm. draws a pretty picture. So all the services side of things, you want to get the services laid out, even if they end up doing the the... the, the you know the, the main plans um, if indeed they do it rather than you in-house but you can then do the service layouts yes absolutely we, or, or importing CAD files from an architect and saying that very nice thanks very much we're now going to draw where the hell we're going to put the radiators and so on, it, yeah. on it because that's totally irrelevant from building regs or, or planning application that yeah. you say well your, your drain doesn't work or, or yeah. where does it actually go? Um, yeah. And we have that on pretty much every project. That as you're adding en suites in left, right, and centre, uh, in domestic or, or student markets, the en suite is the the number one. And we're saying very nice. Where do we put the drain? Yeah. And, and much as Sunny Flow advertised quite heavily on TV, nobody likes them. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't like installing them. People don't like them in their houses. They're noisy, they leak, they smell, you have to replace them. So you really do have to think, how can I get a three or four inch soil stack through a staircase? <laughs> and yeah. often that means you relocate the ensuite completely upstairs. Yeah. And so it's in the same room, but it's in a different part of the room completely. So you've played with the plans from there. That's really what, having been given so many, we've just done uh, a student uh, property that the plans are a floor plan for the application. They don't show anything. They just show a two-dimensional floor plan of the building. And the building regs officer came around and said, where are your build drawings? And, we, and my co-director pointed at his head and said, in there. Yeah. Um, he said, I, I don't want pictures because the last ones we've had have been such a nightmare. We're just going to walk around this building sucking our thumb and staring at things and figuring out how to do it. And yeah. I thought to myself, well, that's good from an experience perspective that we can, but surely we want to be able to come in, put a sheet of paper in, in the centre of the building and say to everyone, right, plumber, electrician, joiner, this is where you need to be doing stuff. Or, yeah. you know, marking it out on the floor with gaffer tape or anything. We need to be able to do that. Having 
pre-thought it through rather than drill a hole through a floor and then go, oops, now what? Yeah, yeah. The, the, other, do. the other thing you'll be able to do as you, as you gain confidence with it is once you've done your outline shell, you'll be able to, commit, you'll be able to communicate that to your different trades and get their input because they, they, they often have other ideas, practical insight into how to do these things. Uh, so rather than leaving it until the working drawings are approved, um, you know, get some input from, from the guys who know how to physically do this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And, and especially with things like loft conversions, which is one of the things that, you know, we're, we're pretty good at and, and the, the lads have done them. They, they present their own challenges. You've got to work with, with eaves. You, you've got to work with existing uh, floor joists and so on. Yeah. You've got to think, how do I get uh, a shower room and a towel radiator and a radiator and a, a built-in furniture? How do I physically fit this into the space uh, with, without just, inverted commas, cramming it into the space? Um, and, and just thinking about where the pipe work goes, it's, it's the one thing that nobody ever thinks of. And if you're in a student property, you can just drop a pipe into a, a hallway and then box it in. And it's fine. It looks horrendous, but it's boxed in. Nobody knows there's a soil stack there because they don't know what the boxing in's for. Can't really do that in somebody's domestic home because it doesn't look very nice. Um, yeah. And they'll be standing there looking at it going, that's not very nice. And you say, well, yeah, but that's where your architect said it was going to go. Mm. Um, yeah. but it, and then it's your fault, though, isn't it? Because you're the builder. Even though the architect said that's where it's going to go, it's... Uh... The, yeah. Yes, the architect's not going to turn up with his pink sunglasses and Range Rover outside and come in and go, oh, yes, yes, that saw stack, uh, yeah, it's there as a feature. <laughs> um, <laughs> Put a vase on it. <laughs> he, he, he's just going to be sitting in his office having been paid a flat fee for doing the work and going yeah. from there. The other thing, just moving on from that, does really link into the health and safety element to the software package as well. I know you're doing an awful lot of work on the new CDM. Yeah. Um, regs because they are they are a minefield technically if you really read into it it kind of doesn't really apply to 95 percent of domestic projects because of the the notification period of how many hours of people on site and that kind of thing the way they seem to have got out of it is by the majority of projects just won't need this or it, you'll get away with it however the responsibility has changed completely to the client it is now, from my understanding of it, your domestic client's responsibility to have health and safety taken care of. And Indeed. they're leaning towards pushing this towards architects. And architects, the two or three I've spoken to, have just laughed at it and said, no way. No way are we going to put our professional indemnity risks up. Are we going to take on this level of, of knowledge or risk and I said no great we will yeah I'm sorry I said yep we'll do it we're CDM coordinators we've gone on the course okay we've gone on the old course so we will need a refresher but all our software does it we do the F10 notification if it's necessary we can print a nice sexy looking audit file that if um, the health and safety executive do happen to drop in on your site and again as we discussed earlier if you are a firm and you've got sight boards outside and sign written vans, the lad who works for um, the health and safety executive who's just driving to McDonald's for some lunch will go, oh, I'll just pull up and have a look there. Yeah. I'll just pop in and, and see what they're doing. Have you got your audit file? Have you got your health and safety file? Yes, it's in the van. Here you go. Mm. Or, you know, we, we can email you a copy. Would you, would you like one? Having that... Ignoring the fact that you you may have some utter Burke sitting there putting a nail through his foot, the, you can't control that through um, software. But we, we're quite comfortable with saying to domestic clients and to architects as a sort of selling point, we are 100% confident to take on the CDM health and safety responsibility because having... A, 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 I may feel like a bit of an idiot, but I went on a three-day course and I actually took your... Hey, um, the booklet uh, and the oh, software. The, oh, the guy, the, um, the, the the user guide for health and safety yes. expert. Yes, <laughs> I did, yes. Yeah. I yeah. took it with me and uh, uh, sat there in the training course and whenever they were talking about stuff, I was looking at the tick box bit on the back and uh, I just sat oh, back wow. after the second day 
and the coordinator said to me, what are you grinning at? And I said, it's brilliant. I've got a software that does this. Excellent. Oh, that's <laughs> lovely. <laughs> yeah. So, Can I and say, so on, C, on CDM 2015, because we have obviously updated Health and Safety Expert for that um, very recently, obviously, with the regs having um, come out. Um, the, the notification, just, uh, just a, a small point on that, and um, um, uh, not wanting to kind of contradict or anything, but in terms of no. our understanding of um, notification now, the, the levels of notification have changed with CDM 2015, but that has, that's, that, there's no trigger point for anything, um, the notification. It just means that it's a certain size of project that the HSE need to know about. In terms of um, CDM regulations generally, they apply to all projects now, dom all right. domestic, yeah. so lofts, extensions, um, you name it, even the kitchen fit, you know, even if you're in a kitchen fit or whatever. So all of those kind of projects, they need your construction phase, health and safety plan, um, you know, as a principal contractor, that is. They'll need a health and safety file if the, if the principal designer, who's the kind of the replacement for the CDM coordinator, um, is, is no longer on the project. You know, that the, the building firm has, if there's more than one contractor, has got to do the health and safety file. And, and you know, let's face it, how many projects are going to not have more than one contractor on site. I mean, you said your own business is, 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 a, is a, a group of um, different um, tradesmen stroke right. contractors yeah. in, in itself, isn't it? So you're always going to have, you know, um, you know, several on any kind of um, level of project. Um, so, I think yeah. That's the thing that, without sounding evil about it, you can kind of, in one respect, frighten your domestic customer and then on yeah. the other respect, completely calm them down, which my yeah. colleague has done. There's a, yeah. there's a big loft extension that a, a firm we know has gone and got the project. They've yeah. then got worried about how difficult it is. Yeah. The architect has um, frightened the life out of the domestic client by saying this kind of thing. They asked us to go along. My uh, co-director, John, went, went along, turned up, was chatting away to the client and the architect and everybody, and he said, oh, well, there's my ticket, CDM uh, coordinator myself. Uh, we've got the software that covers it. We'll take it on. You don't need yeah. this guy. Because the, yeah. the architect was being so aggressive, he quite clearly wanted to manage the project for his 5% fee. And, and I, I believe that this loft extension was a £150,000 project. So, of course... That'd be quite a big fee, fee, wouldn't it? <laughs> that would be one heck of a fee. So um, John just comfortably and confidently said, no, get rid of him. We'll do it. And, uh, and and could say, look, I've got my ticket that I am a coordinator. That has changed now. But yeah. the onus is now, from what we understand, the responsibility lies with the client. The person who is paying the money has to nominate. And if they don't yeah. nominate, then it's, it's on them. So if you're saying to somebody, look, we'll give you a health and safety file, method statements, all that kind of thing, we, we will do that for you gratis because we can uh it, it's you're justifying your higher fee yeah. time and time again by yeah. by what else yeah, you're doing um well actually on that it, sorry carry on sorry, i was gonna yeah, i was gonna I'm interrupt done. you there but I've, um, you, you were, yeah. i was just going to say in the new health and safety expert 2015 version which is for cdm 2015 um which you'll obviously have your your your, your update free for because of your you're within your support and updates um for I'll that just project email yeah. yeah. So you get so you get all of that, and what that has in it is, is actually a couple of um, really useful documents, which we think are great for winning work. So pre, you know, kind of pre tender. So you, you're 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 there with your client, and you've got your nice quote, and it's got you know your your very sensible margin, you know, margin and markup, you know, built in, and then you've got to you know you've got to justify that. And the health and safety documentation we've got there is um, a guidance notes for domestic clients about their responsibilities under CDM 2015, which really is saying, obviously, you can nominate someone else to do them. So it kind of outlines, you know, what, what, the, what the client has got to do, but then says, ah, but as a builder, you know, as in you, you're sitting there with them, we know what our responsibilities are, we can take them off you, and then it underlines um, it's another document, which is um, the uh, principal contractor or the contractor's version of that, which says, and we have to do all of these things for you. So you can kind of justify your price, justify your fee 
Um, like yeah, really they're two really useful. Dogs. They're, they're, they're not actually very helpful from the, you know, from the HSE's perspective, but in terms of winning work, they're brilliant because, you know, they're, they're, they're not about audits, they're not about inspections, which a lot about a lot of the rest of the documents are within health and safety expert. But it's all about kind of help helping reassure the client that you know CDM 2015, you know the responsibilities. Here's here, Mr. Client, here's your responsibilities, but I'll take them on for you, and you can charge for them or not. <laughs> There's two, there's two elements we've noticed for, for, for that. We, we want to put it into our quotes uh, yeah. with the covering letter. We want to say, you know, warning, do you know that yeah. there is construction, design and management, health and safety onus and requirement on the, the client? Yeah. But don't worry, because we can do it. Now, yeah. if we can follow that up with, with those two documents as well that come within our, our, our cold quote pack, yeah. then while you're frightening somebody with one sentence, the next time you, sentence you're saying, but don't worry. Now, yeah. If that person rings their architect and says, is this true? Their architect's going to go, yes, it is, because the first thing their architect's going to pick up on is, hello, there's a builder who's going to take this on. This means it's not my problem. Yeah. So yeah. They will also sort of recommend you a bit. So, and, and the other side of it is we've, we've got a, a, a project where Lloyds Bank are providing the development funding and they have said, because obviously the CDM 15 hadn't come in, but it remains a requirement for the agreement, this has to be CDM coordinated. We, yeah. as the bank, have to see the file. Yeah. So that was another thing for us. I mean, oh, I see, I've, not, I've, not, um, I've, I've not heard of that before. So from the, from the finance side, they're, they're, they're demanding that level of information Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And on... Um, Anything that has got stage development money, so anybody who's doing a self-build who's getting stage drawdown, or yeah. any developer or investor who's getting stage drawdown, the bank have been told by their credit that is this project CDM notifiable historically? Yes. Yeah. We need to see, or at least need to know, who is going to be handling that, and we will need to see the paperwork for our audit file. Yeah, so you, uh, yeah, you can do that. We can provide it, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, and that's something, it's another string to the bow that realistically, until I'd gone on the uh, CDM course, I didn't quite realise the, the gravitas of the importance of what it was, um, because the health and safety thing for me, I, I'd looked at it and gone, oh, how useful, it's got method statements and things in it, This, I'm sure this will be exactly what we require. After going on the CDM course, looking back at it, I'm going, brilliant. We can, you've got, you've got the tools you need. Yes. Yeah, there's, the software actually it does all this for me. Fantastic. And then if you ever fall foul of the HSE um, dropping in on your site, you can show that you do care, you are taking it seriously, you are providing support and training for people, you have got the appropriate um, health and safety, you know, PPE and all that kind of thing. Yes. Um, but if you have made a mistake or you, you are getting something wrong, you can work with them to get it right rather than it instantly shut down your site and go, you're a naughty boy, here's a big fine, we'll yep. sue everyone. Um, if you're saying, look, well, no, we've been on the training, we have the software, we do follow it, here's the, the file, mm. and they go, yes, but you're doing this wrong in your actual methodology. Yeah. You know, not the, the paperwork's fine, but you're not actually carrying it out on site you can get somewhere without getting quite as in trouble. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they can see your commitment to it in the first place. They see that you care. Yeah, yeah. they see that you're actually putting some effort into into what you're doing as a firm, and it was another reason of covering our, our behinds, really. Yeah. Um, you know, things like the project management, uh, Gantt charts and so on, are, are very pretty for showing the client how... When you add in a client changing their mind, how easy it is to actually stick to that is is, a, is another question. Right? <laughs> yeah, I bet. Previous, I... previous lives, I've, I've had Gantt charts pasted on the wall with the little milestone dots, and, and you, you're always shoving it back. Um, yeah. Or you're doing things without it, but it's another thing that, that looks nice. Within the health and safety element to it, a domestic client historically was never going to give a flying toss no. about any of that. And they're not yeah. willing to pay for it necessarily either, are they? Correct. You know, you know. 
buildings may feel that the you know the Chaz um, uh, mark or anything like that is important. It isn't. Domestic clients don't even know what it is. They know what gas safe is because it has the words gas and safe in it. Yeah. Um, but th- that's why a corgi went wrong as well. People kept thinking it was a car or a dog. Uh, it needs to be exactly what it says on the on the tin. The the little chas logo. If you're not in the industry, you don't know what it is. So if you mm-hmm. then just come straight out to somebody and say, "This is your responsibility on your project in your house, whether it's fair or not, is 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 irrelevant. You want an extension. This is what the law is. We can handle it for you." Yeah. So you, again, you're empowered. You're, you're, you're empowered as the business to, to, to deliver that, and you can charge for it or not, accord, you know, accordingly as you. It goes as you right see back it. to the beginning when we were saying we're, we're looking at the business. You're looking at being a company. You're looking at providing a service as opposed to a trade. Um, you, you are solving people's problems, but showing them on minute one with your paperwork, with your your quote and your supporting documentation, you're showing them they don't know you from Adam, they're not going to employ you three or four times every year. You need to show somebody that you know what you're doing and give them confidence in you Mm. to take on their project in their own home. And that's quite a mindset change when you've been working in commercial or, or student properties where you're dealing with the client saying, get the best bang for your buck. Yeah, and and deliver it to a tight time frame. Your your reputation is: Do you deliver on time to budget? Yes. Domestic clients completely different. They've never met you from Adam. They may have been recommended. They may not. But you've got to give them the complete confidence that you are going to deliver, and that you know what you're doing. And if you say to them up front, "This is a big legal issue," CDM, Google it, and you'll see that it's it's a very contentious issue. Don't worry, we've invested in software that keeps us compliant and looks after you. Yeah. Right. Well, guys, we could talk all day about this because there's so much good. information yeah. in it, and uh, it, it's, it's it's great to hear that it's how the software is impacting on your business. But um, I don't know about you, Joe, but I think we we need to. I was going to ask one really small question um, of Charles, if he if he didn't mind, before we went. I was just I was just wondering, you know, how, how have you found your experiences with the with our business support team with the software? If we like, kind of round up on that, you know, have you had, had um, or, or your your colleagues um, who are using the software have they had any opportunity to, to or need needed to needed to speak with the, them at all? The only requirement we've had is, is helping us walk through the install yeah. and walk through the getting because obviously we'd bought the whole suite getting the extra plugins and making sure that we we'd got all those little badges lit up and you know we've got the facilities to us yeah. and while we were doing that and speaking with with Matthew we, we realized that actually we we needed an additional license um for what we were doing and we made the business decision to buy that so uh without saying you successfully upsold uh, we, we did get the support we required to install it, and we've had the the knowledge of saying, well, the way that we work and we spread out, we, we need this extra license. Yeah. So we've invested there. We've used that. Our next stage is to look into doing a day's training um, with yourselves. Uh, is that on, on the Plans Express? Yes. Yeah, yeah. The Plans Express and how it feeds into Estimator Express, that's what we want to do. It's trying to schedule that and and get it all priced up is is going to prove tricky but we'll get there um yeah you sound like you're incredibly busy finding finding time in the diary that's the that's the thing isn't it it's, we, uh, we are and that's that's as you touched on earlier on because we're doing a transition from busy work that is massively demanding to work where we do make money we can actually plan in uh a bit of a gap within it you know you we yeah. worked in such tight time frames that we we're, we're finishing this one job on on friday and going to the next one on monday leaving the decorator to finish off next week and the carpets to go in the week after and we're gone yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so to find the time within that just it just hasn't really worked this is where we're hoping through the software we can pitch for the domestic work and we can actually plan in yeah. You know, a week's gap at the end of a project so that we know when it's run over we're okay. We're not we're not yeah. impacting. We don't have to ring people and say we've got to let you down. 
you yeah. don't want to have to to do that. The one thing I'll just as a summary from myself with your software, yeah. which I think would be helpful, is to say we bought it to get our pricing right. It has been the catalyst to us completely changing how we do business and looking wow. at how we do business. I know, and that's not blowing smoke up your backside. It generally <laughs> is looking at. Thank you. It is looking at our business as a firm, as a construction company, what people expect in the market now, making sure that we get our pricing right, we are providing those extra levels of services that are necessary. I cannot recommend the uh, health and safety element to that package enough. You know, the contract stuff, it's, it's a nice little bonus to us, but you can buy a contract for 20 quid. It, it's, that, that's a, we've got it, it's in the suite, it's a big help. The wizard is so easy to use. Great, it's a facility. The health and safety stuff keeps you compliant. It's a sellable element far more now than it was some years ago. Yeah. So that's one of the gems, I think, that we've stumbled on by buying the whole suite. Well, thank you, Charles, for your, uh, your, 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 your kind words. And, and, do, <laughs> and, and, and do make sure that your guys um, um, you know, give us a call if they've got any you know, ongoing um, user questions and what have you. They're there for, they're there for you, um, so that they'll, they'll, they'll keep on supporting. And if you don't need yeah. to call us, we'll keep on updating the software to make sure that you're, you're compliant with the latest regs and latest uh, legislation and stuff. And uh, we, we, wish you, we wish you very well with your business transition. I yeah, mean, and, we, we look forward to working together for some time. Thank you. I, I'm just going to sort of say one thing before I um, part company with you. Um, is the design and build for domestic clients is a fantastic opportunity for you, uh, Charles. Um, it's really it really puts you in control of the entire project from end to end, and enables you to make good um, margins. And you. you you're probably not aware, but the, the planned software combined with Estimator Express will also produce all your building regs notes for you automatically. So you, you have the power within that software to completely transform your, your business. Thanks. It's been good to speak to you. You've given me some good, helpful insight uh, to what we should do with our business and reminded me why we paid a good chunk to get the software. Um, well, thank it, you. One, one you know, final comment on this. Well. We, we had a, a conversation with another customer a, a month or so ago, and three years ago he had four people in his business uh, before he bought the software. He's now got 40, and he, put it, he puts it down to a great uh, extent down to the software, and it's, it's, it's won him a lot of work and saved him a lot of management costs as well. So Yeah, how big do you want to be, I think, is, is the question I've asked uh, John on a couple of occasions. I think uh, at the moment I quite like the idea of having – five or six extensions a year and keeping ticking over with the team mm. across two at once. Um, I think much bigger than that. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see. If the business is there, sometimes you dive in and take it. Sometimes you think, actually, I'm quite, I'm quite comfortable in the fur-lined rut. Uh, <laughs> I'm yeah. making money. Yeah, right. that's it, isn't it? Making money. On that well, note, uh, then, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll sign much. off. Cheers, Charles. Thank that's you very much for your second. time. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So I hope you'll agree that was a, a, a very interesting and insightful uh, discussion. So before we sign off, for those of you who haven't uh, had a detailed look at our software, uh, the software is very easy to use. You basically fill in a whole series of on-screen diagrams of things like walls and roofs, and the software will then calculate detailed estimates, give you hundreds of reports, all based on live pricing from your merchants, people like Jusons, Travis, Trade Point, Graham's, Screwfix, and your own labour rates, how much you're actually paying your guys on site, not, uh, not some generalised uh, labour resource. You can also plan your job using the onboard uh, Gantt charts. Again, extremely easy to use. You can set your own Gantt chart up in a matter of uh, seconds or minutes, really, and that then links all the data together and enables you to produce a whole series of graphs and uh, reports, as we've seen earlier, highly detailed uh, lists of materials and labor. And of course, the, the various graphs that you can see on screen, cost cash flows, breakdowns of material, numerous reports are, are very useful. It also generates quotes in a matter of seconds that you can give to your clients, which have been proven to win uh, many, many more uh, jobs for builders. In fact, in a recent survey, 
it was reported that our software was increasing uh, sales by 230%, whilst at the same time improving uh, profit margin. Uh, the software will also produce abbreviated quotes if you're interested. So, if you're interested to know more about the software, give us a call on the numbers on the screen, email us or call our support if you'd, if you'd like to have a, a demonstration or a, a trial of the software and we'll be delighted to help and get you improving your business in the same way that Charles has. Thank you.